hello guys yeah thanks for coming back again if you're a subscriber of this channel and if you are yet to subscribe please click on the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bell that will let you know when we drop our video so we want to give us another um mind-blowing video on the physics practical alternative b uh, which is going to be electricity and that will be number two question so how do we go about this actually the materials are basically used for direct verification of ohm's law so we have brought this to you to at least give you an idea of what you might need to know about it so let's consider this diagram now we have the voltmeter the resistance label rx which is unknown and we have the hammer, the key and uh, the the cell so we are going to be improvising for the resistance here yeah? so the resistance here is not actually working though i supposed to label it rx and mind you even if you can see the value 2 ohms at the end of the practical when we plot our graph and that do some calculations if we could not get this that means okay there might be error somewhere or something close to this but i won't be using this i will substitute a wire to in in place of that so this wire has the odd color of all our connections here so it will serve as a resistor a resistor for us so i will be determining the resistance of this wire in place of this okay so now this is the setup so the wire is going to be in this place and this is voltmeter this is ammeter here the key don't worry i will improvise for the key so which means I'll be, there will be direct connection between the ammeter and the cell so i have arranged the apparatus already look at the voltmeter here connected this is the junction you can see in that question yeah so that's this junction so i'm supposed to connect the resistor here so which i'm putting uh the black um wire here so this is the second junction so which are seen here and this line is going straight to the battery going through the battery and this is ammeter that will be connected directly to the battery so which means in between the battery battery and the ammeter there should be key here but we are leaving the key so and this is the ammeter connected to the junction that led to the voltmeter as you can see according to that diagram so we are told to carry out the following procedure connect the circuit uh, using the above diagram as guide so with the key close read and record the voltmeter and ammeter reading when e is 1.5 so this reads 1.5 so this is actually 1.5 on it so when this read 1.5 record the value here on v that's voltmeter record the value on <coughs> a meter so after that we evaluate i inverse and v inverse then repeat the procedure for e equals 3.0 4.5 6.0 and 7.5 actually we will we only be able to do 1.5 3.0 4.5 and possibly 6.0 if uh, the ammeter the voltmeter can read up to that okay so then we move on we have to just move on to uh, repeat that procedures for those value of e and then uh, make i inverse and v inverse in each cases then we tabulate our reading then plot the graph of v inverse on vertical axis and i inverse on horizontal axis so we determine the slope of the graph then evaluate the inverse of the slope so the inverse of the slope will happen to be the resistance of the black wire which is in place of this so then look at the table now and you are meant to stay to precaution which is as usual so then this is the table already drafted so let's run the experiment and see how the graph will look like so guys we have actually connected it so this is the voltmeter and this is the junction where the voltmeter is connected to the resistance which is the black wire so and then i have the next junction 
where ba the battery of the cell will be connected and this is my ammeter so we can look at both readings together so and then if the resistance of this wire is too much I might change it so but notwithstanding let's still proceed so and then uh, without the resistance I would love to take the reading of the ammeter and voltmeter so if I were to do that, I would just have to disconnect this wire which serves as the resistance and check the voltage. So if it is to test if it is 1.5 or not. So let's do that. I can actually do that now. So okay, see the voltmeter is reading 1.5 because if you look at it now you have 0 to 1 so look at the downside so we are having 1.5 here so and that's good so let's connect it back and see the changes that might take place so now we have to put our meter into place as well this time around so then um, we connect this as the case may be so we connect the battery Okay, good. Can you see the value on the ammeter? It's now very, very low because there is a resistance connected. And this is the ammeter. The current flowing is now 1.2 according to the reading here. So that's 1.2. So we can take that into consideration. But I see the value here to getting too small. But let's keep adding up uh, cells and see what the changes will be. So I'll record... Um, for the ammeter, I record 1.2, so that will be 1.20. Then for the voltmeter, I'll be recording. Okay, that will be 0. Point, let's make it again. So that will be 0. 0.3. So let's say 0. 0.3 volts. That's 0. 0.30. So now let's double the battery and see what happens. So doubling the battery is to combine these two. And moreover, whenever you connect your battery and you see that your voltmeter and ammeter is reading in, up, in other directions, so it means you have to turn your battery around. That is just it. So let's connect the battery. Don't worry about the battery connection. I'll just make it here. So after the connection, there is deflection again. So let's check it out. Okay, good. I can see there is an increase in current and also correspond to increase in okay, maybe you should check that very well. So let's look at it. Okay, you have to ensure tight connection because of such errors. This is just the usefulness of key. So if key had been available, it would be easier. Okay, I think the currents read 1.5 and um, the voltage reads 0 0.5. So currents which is 1.50, then we have 0 0.50. So let's move on to doubling the battery again. I mean, making it 3, that is going to be uh, 4.50. So doing that now, what will be the value? Let's check it out. So it goes this way. Wow. All right. Okay, so that's it. Let's go again. Okay, let's notice the trend. Okay, after 1.5, I can read um, 1.7 on the ammeter. So then the voltmeter, let me read it again. The voltmeter is actually reading beyond 1.5, and that should be beyond 0 0.5 rather. Okay, so it's OK, 
Okay, let's record that to be 0 0.7. Um, 1 point, um, okay, let's use 80, then 0 0.70. So then let's make the battery 6.0 now. So and see. So let's take when it is 6.0 now and see what the value will be. So at 6.0, I'm saying, okay, let's say getting to 2, 2.0. Okay. 2.0 on the ammeter. Okay. 2.0 on the ammeter. So let's take the reading for both meter now. Okay, both meter reads 0.9. So 2.00 on ammeter. Then we have a 0 0.90 on volt meter. So then the last reading, uh, I couldn't get enough cells to make that. So I will make that. For 7.50, I will make it. Okay, this is my table now. So for 7.50, I will have to make that maybe 2.2. So that's 2.20. So then this will definitely be um, 1.10. So now let's evaluate and plot the graph. So this is our table now. So you have to choose a very good scale to plot your graph. So this is for V. So we could get for V inverse and this is I inverse. So now we just have to plot this on vertical axis and this on horizontal axis. So I look at the scale, I see if I use 0 0.1 it will work for this for 2 cm and if I use 0 0.5 it will actually work for this so that my graph can actually cover 70 percent at least so then this is the graph tied to the scale stated and this is v axis don't use x and y axis so this is v inverse and this is i inverse with their unit so I've, I've put that on the graph so now let's plot the values i will have to put the values and then uh, show you so i've actually plotted it so let's look at the graph together so this is it there is even an intercept on i inverse axis so if you look at it very well uh this point is out of it so we only have five points and that's one two three uh four and then okay we have okay we have zero point four five right yeah so we have one, two, three. One, two, three on the points, and the remaining two was distributed here. So it's just this, this, and this. So this is not part of the point. Sorry. So this, this, and these are the points. So this is not part of the point with this. It's just a mistake. So this and these didn't fall on the line, but they were distributed on both sides of the line. So we can go with this. However, try to plot your graph with accuracy because the number of lines that be on the the number of points that be on the line it's it has its 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 mark or score that you're going to get for that. So if you are if you are able to get all the five on line, then hmm, you are excellent. So let's look at the slope. Majority have been asking how to calculate slope and how to find it. So I can decide to draw my slope line from here down here just to make it big okay so i'll draw that and show you and see you will see how i will make my calculation of slope now so the line of slope goes thus okay though i would love to join it with two sides that are making sense but uh, let's leave it that way so you can see the line of slope now. So this is the line, this with this. So this side represents the change in V inverse. So change in V inverse. 
and this side represent change in i inverse so this change in i inverse so the slope s must be changing v inverse over changing i inverse which i'll calculate somewhere here okay so this slope s the slope s is equal to um, the change in v inverse by changing i inverse so in order to note that i'll look at the value here that's my v inverse one so that's 2.0 so i'll put that here 2.0 minus so then i'll trace this line downward so when i trace it downward it falls at 0 0.5 so i'll put minus 0 0.5 over then i'll check this this falls at 0 0.7 so i'll put my 0 0.7 here minus then this falls at if you count the line very well you have one two three four five six seven so that is actually um 0 0.01 that's uh, 0 0.37 so i have 0 0.37 here so then i'll calculate this so this will definitely give me 1.5 over so that gives me 1.5 at the up this one 0 .0, 0 0.33 so by the time i divide these two it give me this so what will be the unit of your slope this one is v inverse slash a inverse you can leave your slope like this so then we are told to evaluate k which is the slope raised to power minus one so this will tell us the resistance of our wire so that will be 4.55 raised to power minus one so so i'll be having one over 4.55 so which means the resistance of that wire is around 0 0.22 ohms though this is what they ask us to find so which means since we are taking inverse of this so the unit of the k we need to calculate it so here now we have the unit here to be um, 1 over v times a over 1 so and that is ampere per volt so the inverse of that will be what volt per ampere and which is same thing as v over i which is r so it means this is going to be 0 0.22 so this represents ohm so you don't have to put this just make sure you use the values of units that is given to you in the question thanks for watching please subscribe to the channel share our videos because we are going to be posting more wonderful videos on engineering, mathematics, and general science courses. Thank you.